wish I could start with something, tell you my impressions of you. It appears to me that um, since I was here last time, people seem to have greater, more intense problems. This is for all people in general, not no one in particular, and also for the majority of people that I was talking with, which is more than what we have here. This night alone, before I came, I spoke to five different people who are not with our group, or they weren't with our group last time either. Now, this intensification of problems appears as though people are going backwards, but it isn't true. People are beginning to rise to the state where they can outwardly express themselves. Their problems are now coming out into the manifest rather than staying held in the mind. When people are very apathetic, it's difficult for them to express. It's difficult for them to do. And so the problems remain whirling around in their mind, and most of them don't come out in the world. When they get just one step above that, they're still in this apathetic state, which is a very low state, and they're beginning to acquire some of the capability of doing. And then their problems become manifest. And it seems as though the world is falling in on them. So it's actually a state of growth to move up from the tamasic, the complete tamasic state, and come up into the beginnings of the rajasic state. And that's the state of tamasic rajasic. Are you all familiar with these terms? Tamasic, rajasic, sattva, avicin? So when we come up into this uh, tamasic rajasic state, we begin to do with tamasic tendencies. So we're somewhat destructive, and that includes ourselves. So we become destructive to ourselves, we have problems, and things seem to get worse. Sometimes we think we're going backwards, but actually we're moving ahead. Now the step above the Mastic Rajasic would be pure Rajasic, one of doing it. Right in the middle, you're equally destructive and constructive. Move up another step, you move into the Rajasic Sattva area, where you're a big doer constructively. You step up from there, you go into the Sattva state, you don't have to do, you just have to be. So the overall picture that I see is that the world is moving into this, moving up into this uh, tamasic, rajasic state, and everyone seems to have bigger and better problems. Now it's not everyone, of course the percentage of those on the path is less than the percentage of those in the world. They're all involved in this. Do you see the expression? The race issue, juvenile delinquency, uh, Vietnam, Cyprus, Congo, prevalent uh, everywhere today. The way they're coping with it is uh, in a tematic way, a, a destructive way. Problems don't have to be solved by killing each other, by violence, by looting. Problems could be solved by discussion, and should be. 
but it's a step forward from a lower state. The world today is in a very low state of beingness. It's usually called the materialistic age. If you haven't read the Sri Yukeswar's Holy Science on the Cycles, it lays out the various cycles of Earth and how we go from the top to the bottom to the top every 24,000 years. We came out of the lowest stage uh, about 500 AD. You know what the Dark Ages were. We're moving into the second stage and we're having the growing pain of getting out of the first into the second but the second is not a highly spiritual stage. It's a stage where technically we advance tremendously. The third stage begins the state of we know this is a mental world. We stop fighting each other and we begin to love each other. And the fourth stage the state in which man knows his beingness in God. However, at any time, whenever anyone chooses, he moves into the highest state. We don't have to stay at the level that the world is in, in general. And those of us who are on the path are pulling up out of this general level of the world. Aren't we lucky? To the world, uh, everything is hopeless. They feel helpless. We know there's a way out. No matter how much it hurts, we know there's a way out. We have a hope. What's the way out? Not looking to the world for happiness. Not looking to people for happiness. But looking for the place where happiness is. And that place is right within us within our consciousness. It's our natural, inherent state, which we have, through ignorance, undone by imposing concepts of limitation. I need this, I need him, I need her, and if I don't get these things, I have trouble, I am hurt. Growth is only letting go of these concepts of limitation. Or, on the positive side, going within and seeing this unlimited being that we are. Anytime we have trouble, anytime we have a problem, we're trying to be the ego. We're trying to express the self through the limited ego, and it's too small, it gets squeezed and it hurts. So if there is a problem, the thing to do is to ask yourself, what am I doing? Wherein is my ego uh, demanding, seeking, and so forth? If the answer comes, if you see how ego-wise you're causing this so-called problem, you pull the cause up from the subconscious into the conscious, and once it's conscious, you naturally let go of it. 
the reason why one doesn't let go of it is because the reason, the thought that initiated this difficulty is subconscious. So either we make the thought conscious and let go of it, or we know strongly enough that we are not this body, this mind, this world. We are the self, and when you feel the self, the feel of the self is nothing but unlimited joy. What more do you want? Now you got everything. I sound quite indicting when I say any problem, any trouble, is ego-motivated. But that, that you'll find is true. When you be yourself, there is no problem. There is nothing that will not fall into line perfectly, harmoniously, with no effort. The more ego-motivated we are, the more difficult the world is, the more difficult it is, it is to accomplish something, the less harmony there is, and the greater the misery we have. And it's really as simple as I'm putting it. What's not easy is to let go of these wrong habits of insisting upon being an ego. The habits are strong, they've been well ingrained over millennia, or maybe hundreds of thousands of years. But all of us on the path are now letting go of these things. And we don't let go easily because of habits that's been there over a long, long period of time. However, the moment we choose to let go, then we can. If we say we can't let go, it's because we really don't want to. The desire to let go of the misery isn't strong enough. But actually it's as simple as this. Not easy, but simple. But once we accept it, see the simplicity of it, all we need to do is affect it. And no one can do it for us but we ourselves. We have to let the ego thing go. The ego is, I am an individual lesson. And I have a body, and I can do things. That's wrong. If I am the self, there is no Lester. I have to get Lester out of the way and let self, the God, operate. Actually, you'll move. You sort of float through things. But it's, there's no effort. If there's effort, it's ego. Now, of course, you're going to have to use effort because you're not starting off as the fully realized self. But you see, when this girl goes to the extreme, she lets go, and things happen effortlessly. That's letting go and letting God. Professing faith, professing all these things, doesn't do it. Actually having them does it. The fact that she has trouble with faith is absolute proof that she doesn't have the conviction of God. Don't because have. God is all. God is perfect. And if God is all and God is perfect, everything is perfect. What is there left for me to do? 
And if you take that attitude, so be it. When there's no effort, there's no ego. When the effort is extreme, there's extreme ego. And you're going to use effort until you fully realize. Now there'll be times when you'll use no effort and everything will fall perfectly into line for you. So at times you'll be yourself. Be the witness. Be not the doer. Let it happen. God's will, whatever's happening is good. Be it good or bad. It's the same thing. Whatever's happening in the world is happening in the illusion anyway. What difference does it make whether you have a dream? If the dream is good or bad, it's still a dream. But the reality of you is perfect, all joyous, all glorious, all happy. You're always free if you'll see the truth. There's nothing out there but your consciousness. Everything you see is in your mind, right? Will you see anything and everything? In your mind. Take away that mind. Where is everything? Time. And you do this when you lay yourself down to sleep. You let go of the mind and this whole physical world drops away. So whatever is out there is your consciousness. So if you set up another person and a problem, that's your consciousness. See the perfection. And that's all it will be. The moment you recognize a problem, you're stuck. All there is is a singular oneness throughout. And you are it. That's why I say you can't get rid of a problem. Because if you recognize it, it's real. And at the moment we see the, re the real thing, the perfection, there is no problem instantaneously. If we will just be our natural self, but we're trying to be a limited ego, That takes effort. It takes effort to be limited when your natural state is unlimited. And the more you try to be limited, the more effort it takes. But to be your unlimited self, it takes no effort. Just like your friend, when she uh, got to extremes, she let go, and everything was straight now. No effort. All the time she was trying and trying, things were getting worse and worse. I say, all she had to do was be herself. And she locked herself in a chamber somewhere with a padlock, the thing would have come to her. You don't sit down and wait. You, you don't do anything. You just know that everything's perfect. And then the slightest thought you have will come into being immediately. There's no limitations on God the self. Even if you thought this way in a North Pole, whatever you thought would have to come into being. You can let go. Because you're in, invoking your infinite power. Nothing can stop it. Praying is, praying is for those who are not beyond praying. When you know as much as you know, to whom are you praying to? If you are that, why do you have to pray to it? See, praying admits duality. 
I pray to God. That's why Master says demand. He doesn't say ask. And then when one prays, one should pray for one thing only, more wisdom, so that you eliminate all need for any prayer, for any asking. However, it all depends on one's state of understanding. Most people in the world today need to pray at the beginning. But prayer admits duality. Now this is the weakest point in the Christian world, duality. God is out there. And we know that God is within. Even though Jesus said, seek ye the kingdom of God within. We still look for God without, and he's not out there. He's only within. He turns out to be our very own beingness. The word I is God with nothing added to it. When you just say I, that feeling of I, that's the self, that's God. But when you say am something, that isn't. Or I am something, that isn't. But just pure I, and only I, that's all you see and all you know, that's God. That's why I say God is closer than flesh. It's I. How close is I? Closer than the flesh is. And that is God. Reminding you of what you know. That you are that. So. Just hold on to the word I only. I, 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 I. And you'll be more exhilarated than you feel now. Just try it when you're alone. Just I, I. And not I am a body, I am a mind, but I, 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 that feeling of, of being. I think the word that describes God more than any other single word is beingness. God is all beingness. We are, when we look within, all beingness. Pretending we're a tiny part of it, a limited body mind. But when you look within, you'll see that we are all beingness. So beingness, beingness is God. Beingness is also awareness, consciousness. So it's the same word. Later on you'll see them as identical, beingness, awareness, consciousness. So be yourself and there never will be a problem. Seeing a problem in the world is trying to be a limited ego, body, mind. If you think you have a problem, you do. If you just accept that God is all, God is perfect, that's all there is, and look at perfection, that's all you ever meet with. You have to wipe out the word problem, can't, don't, won't, all negative words. In the future when man is in a state of harmony, all these words will disappear. The higher you go, the more you see the perfection. The more you see problems, the lower you are. What you're talking about is problems. The people who see them want you to be the way they are. They'll tell you that you're wrong. And this is one thing you have to be on guard against. As you grow, those who are not up to you or will try to pull you down to where they are. 
Now, it's not how much you recognize a problem and say, oh boy, this is a problem that shows unselfishness. It's how much you love that shows unselfishness. When you love, you're very constructive whether you're out swinging or not. Just feel love. You don't have to do a thing. You'll be doing more good for the world than all the do-gooders put together who are out there in action. Because thought is far more powerful than action. It's the basis of action. It's the initiator. It comes before it. It determines action. A high being sitting in a cave somewhere, all by himself, is doing far more good for the world than all these organizations that combine and get into action. Now we're back to what we were talking about before. The bottom stage is uh, inaction. The middle state is a very active state. The top state is inaction. Now the bottom state is a one of inertia. It's destructive. It just wants to stop everything, actually destroy everything. The top state lets everything be just the way it is because everything is perfect. The middle state is the action state that pulls you up or pulls you down. Now, as you start coming up, those who are in the active state with the tamasic destructive tendencies will try to pull you down to where they are. Where is your conviction if you go with them? If you go with them, your tendency is to believe more the way they do. Now, the right way is easy. Anytime it's difficult, it's the wrong way. The right way is letting go, letting God, and everything falls into line perfectly. No effort. But what we have to do, it's not God, it's me, the ego, wanting to do, to change things, correct this world, and so forth. Whatever will help you to do and be what you think you should do and be. <laughs> to know who and what you are is the very best thing. There's been moments when you let go and felt your real self. How does it feel? You're infinite. Omniscient. Omnipotent. Right here and now. See that. Stop being this limited, miserable Jim. <laughs> you want to help the world, help yourself. The more you're capable of loving, the more you're helping the world. That sentence, uh, Parliament, Parliament cannot write the world, the people loving can. The President of the United States must necessarily represent the sum total consciousness, the sum total thinkingness of all the people of the United States added together. Divine laws supersede man-made laws. Consciousness determines everything. That's all there is out there, is consciousness. What happens to us individually is our consciousness. We don't like what's happening to us in the world. All we have to do is change our consciousness. 
and the whole world out there is different. What do you think of that statement that uh, that warrants that you are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent? Just stop being what you're not, a body mind, a limited being. So simple. Now, with no solution to problems in the world, you go on forever and ever solving problems in the world, and you'll have more and more and more. As long as you recognize problems, they exist. The thing that makes you let go of problems is the severity of problems. What we do is we stick our hand in a fire and we say, Oh, it's hot, my hand is burning. Boy, do I have a problem. I come on and say, Why stick your hand in the fire? That's all. If you have a problem, you're putting your hand into a problem and yelling it hurt and acting as though you're not putting your hand into it. You act as though you're not doing it. But that problem is only in your consciousness. It's in your mind. Change your mind. Change your consciousness. And immediately the, the world out there is changed. Right, and you'll see that it's so. Or think back and you'll see that these things have happened already. A better answer to what to do is to keep holy company rather than uh, listen to them and try to please them. Mix with people who are with you in your direction. You have no problem finding people who are not. And that's almost everywhere you move, people are not. So why make your friends that way also? And that's why it's good to have groups. That's why it's good to meditate in a group. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And then in between, just mix with people who are conscious of the positive. That's the very prime good of coming together as a group. The direction is You're constantly reminded of your direction. You're with people who are striving in that direction. And you're in an atmosphere that is moving actually opposite to what the world wants you to move in. So keep holy company. as much as possible. Greetings. Love to each and every one of you. Welcome back to our beautiful Sedona. No one here wants to change me. <laughs> Especially when I say it's simple and it's easy. <laughs> but of course I'm crazy and everyone, everyone else is right. But I'll keep saying it to you until you let go of that wanting to change me. And almost overnight you'll go free. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why? Because you are already free. <laughs> Acting and pretending as though you're not. Are you? Mm hmm. That's it. <laughs> Is that difficult? Just be your beingness. Do you have any choice otherwise? No. You are free. Always were, always will be. Just stop acting unfree. How? Let the mind go quiet. How? Get rid of your ag flap, and your mind is quiet. Simple and easy. If you do it. If you don't do it, it's impossible. So what does it take? to do the most simplistic thing there is in the universe, which is to be yourself, to be infinite. To bring it down to the push and pull I think I'm going to add something to step number one, which says you should want really freedom more than you want anything else. I think I'd like to add to it, convert all your wants, convert all your desires to one desire to go free. Convert all your desires into the desire to go free. And I'll guarantee you, you'll get it in a matter of weeks, if not a few months. Convert all your desires in, into the desire to go free. You see what happens then? Everything you go after in the world other than freedom is in the opposite direction of freedom. Every direction you go into in this world other than that of freedom is in the opposite direction of freedom. You're looking to the world to discover yourself. You think this thing can do it, or that person can do it. And I don't know how many of you have discovered that there's only one single happiness, one single joy. And that's when you quiet your mind and you just be. Isn't that difficult? <laughs> But if all your desires are not focused in on the desire of going free, you're looking away from freedom. You're looking to get it where it is not. Isn't that simple? Is there anyone who doesn't see, understand what I just said? Recognize that what you're going after isn't there. The desire that you had will not give you what you're looking for. 
But the only joy is you being you. And you'll stop chasing rainbows. You'll stop all the time being outward. And you'll start being all the time inward. And releasing the desires, the wants. Of course, get them under approval or control or security. Then release them, otherwise you're wasting it. You can release anger, but it's not effective enough. Releasing one unit of approval or control is releasing one unit in every feeling. So releasing approval or control is releasing hundreds of times more than just releasing on anger. It would take you forever to release all your anger. There's too much of an accumulation of it. And this goes for, for every feeling. You've been accumulating them for millions of years. But under approval or control, you can wipe them all out. The number one desire, the number one want, is for absolute security for this body, right? In order to get that security, if I can get you and everyone else to approve of me, I'll be safe and I will survive, right? If I can't, then I want to make you approve of me so I'll be safe and survive. That's control. So the first wish, desire, is for security of the body. The second is approval. The third is control. And the fourth, fifth, odd infinitum is on the chart. But knocking out the first one, wanting to survive, will undo every other feeling. When you no more want to survive as a body, you have no more want. Then you'll discover the big joke you played upon yourself, <laughs> that you are eternal, that you can keep the physical body going forever and ever. But there are much better ways and cooping yourself up in a very fragile physical body. You can be a whole, complete, perfect body. And it looks like this one, without its defects. <laughs> or you could go all the way into the total, whole, complete, absolute, imperturbable peace, which is just beingness, which is just consciousness. You're just conscious, not of bodies and your body. You're just conscious. Maybe the nearest thing to it would be like a daydreaming state where you're thinking of nothing. Everyone can experience the ultimate state because you're in it all the time. And you experience it when your mind goes quiet. It's only the mind that takes you away from it. It's only the mind that makes the noise. Isn't that simple? It really is. And it's easy if you do it. You do it when all your desires focus in to one desire to be free. After you are convinced that freedom is the most desirable thing there is, you kid yourself when you think 
now that, yes, I want freedom more than anything else. Were that true, you'd be free right now. Yes, I want my freedom, but all my little toys and play acts and games in the world, I've got to take care of them also. So the play acts of the world take you away from your beingness in a direction where you're trying to experience a beingness externally where it isn't. And when your mind goes quiet, you discover you set up the entire externality. You set it up. It's only in your mind. And when your mind goes quiet, you discover it. Quiet your mind. You'll know what the world is. I can't tell you what the world's going to be like to you because it is to you what you make it. It's nothing but the out-projecting of your mind. Now, what changes is your attitude toward the world? When you see it for what it is, you'll see it like a night dream appears to you after you awaken from the night dream. It's there, but it's a dream that never really was. And so what is your attitude? Subconsciously, your mind is sucked right into all that action by those feelings. That's what the mind is. It's the composite of those feelings. The mind is nothing but perturbation. See, there's such a word. Every thought is a disturbance. How do you live without thoughts? Effortlessly, by intuition. You don't do a thing after your mind is quieted. You just witness, without even moving, without lifting a finger, you witness everything. So what does it take to do that? No more act flap. See, the act flap, all the feelings of programs put in as pro-survival of the body. Have you seen that? So subconsciously, as long as you have a feeling, you're on guard in order to survive. But it's so much of it, you look away from it as though it isn't, and you call it subconscious. But as long as you have feelings, subconsciously, you're in a tremendous turmoil. You're on guard lest you die all the time, 24 hours a day. It's not like saying 25 hours a day. If I can get you to see the points I'm making now, it should help you stop chasing rainbows, chasing after happiness where it isn't. It's so obvious that you cannot satisfy a desire. If you satisfied a desire, it would be gone. No more desire, right? You satisfied it's gone. How long would it take you to satisfy all your present desires? A short time, you'd be in a state of satiety and your mind would be quiet. But the more you try to satisfy a desire, the stronger it becomes. Because there is no satisfying of a desire. There's only a releasing of it. You must become desireless by focusing all your desire into the desire to go free, knowing that that's where your ultimate happiness lies. You see, you're not convinced 
that your ultimate happiness lies in being totally free of all your feelings. If you were, you'd just undo them. Undo them. Just you'd let them push out. Every bit of every feeling is trying to push itself out, trying to expend itself, and you're sitting on top of it, holding it down with that much energy plus a, a little more. If you just stop holding the suppressed stuff down, it would all run out on its own in a matter of minutes. It would be like puncturing a pressure kettle. You'd be free. Do you see how much you're holding on to the bondages, the things that are keeping you bound? Every desire is like an iron chain around you. Count up all the desires and you have all the iron chains that are binding you. So to sum it up, you've got to convince yourself that the ultimate happiness is freedom. And the ultimate freedom is no ag flat. And that when you do that, then you'll naturally convert all your desires into going free, and you do it quickly. The reason why we want you to achieve goals is to bring up the antis to it, the blocks, the negative feelings, so you can release them. After you release them, you get convinced, then go for it. Go all out for it. Then you'll discover you can think and instantly have things. I think everyone here has had experiences of things coming without effort, just for the thought of it. If it happens once, it can happen twice. If it happens <laughs> twice, it can happen four times. If it happens four <laughs> times, it can happen 16 times. If it happens 16 times, it can happen 64. And on and on until it's all gone. Then you'll just think and let the world happen. You notice our whole approach is letting go of. We're never with effort trying to extremely do something. The pounding of the positive thinking world. You've got to allow the world to be what it is. There's one effort you must use, and that's to convert all your desires into one desire, to go free. That's the effort you need to use and should use. Take all that effort that you're wasting out there on the world Put it into wanting freedom only. And just get it quickly. Now the times you can grow the fastest are when you're up high. Most of us will use a method when the world is hurting so badly we can't stand it anymore. Then we release. You should release when you're up. When you're up high, you can bend down low to, and deep to get a hold of the fear of dying, the fear of living, the wanting to survive as a body, the fear of separation. It's when you're high you can tackle the bottom line, security. Now, when you have no more fear of dying, that's it. Or when you're free, you laugh at 
dying. It's just the opposite of what you thought. The greatest death he ever went through was being born. <laughs> and when you die, you get a sense of freedom that's the greatest you ever had in the experience of this body. So again, focus all your wants, all your desires, into the desire to go free. Get all the eggs flap out and be what you are, unlimited. Get rid of your egg flap and then <laughs> your thinking will create without effort. Get rid of your egg flap. You can be the number one singer, the number one actress in the world. <laughs> you won't have a need for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a situation every moment of your life. Is there a time when you're not in a situation when you're asleep? And you'll never know what you're going to do after until you go free. You might uh, carry through on being the number one singer. And then let it go. <laughs> you don't need anything. You are the all when you're free. You don't have to go for everything. Everyone is you, everything is you. It's your creation. But again, if we think we can't, we make a goal of it, it gives us an opportunity to release. But you want to be super intensive now. I'm telling you, drop the <laughs> whole thing. Why keep working and pushing it? Get rid of your egg flap. If you're released once, you can release twice. If you're released twice, you can release four times. You can release the whole thing. Why don't you release the whole thing? Because of the first thing I said, you have desire for rather than freedom. Desire is your enemy. Desire is your number one enemy. Take your number one enemy and use it against itself. Take your number one enemy desire and convert it into the desire for freedom. And be fighting fire with fire. <coughs> How does that sound to you when I say take your number one enemy desire focuses in on the desire to go free. But it does puzzle me as to why all of you discover that releasing is a great thing and that you do not take it all. You just don't take it all. Why? Can you tell me? Your programs take over. Or your programs have a mind and a power and a punch and they hit you, right? Congratulations for taking responsibility for your programs. Because as long as you give your power to the programs, you're, you're finished. But who gives the power to those programs? Who holds on to them? See, it's back to want. You don't want to see them. And you, uh, yeah, and that's the basic principle in the method, is letting go of want. Want, 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 want. 
when there's no more want, you discover you are the all of the entire universe. I still see it as you're needing to focus all your desire into the desire to go free. I think we ought to make that step one of the intensive and super intensive. It's not wanting freedom more than we want approval or control, but taking all our wants and focusing them into the want to go free. That'll do it. It's simple, and it's easy, if you do it. So what I'm saying to you now is, do it. <laughs> in general, all the time you're out in the world, you're going in the wrong direction. You think you're Welfare and security lies out there in the world. And it's only when you're releasing that you're in the right direction. Coming to courses like this is the very best thing you can do. Is stopping going in the wrong direction for a while to concentrate on going in the right direction. It's about time you got together under one roof. Like brother monks and sisters with the resolve to go free immediately. You fulfill that desire. Your mind goes quiet. And you're being. And it feels great. Recognize what that good feeling is. There's one single joy, happiness only in this world. That's when you're being your beingness. Discover that. It'll expedite your going directly for it instead of trying to fulfill <clears throat> desires. Now, because it made you feel great, you'll naturally want to do it again and 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 again here until eternity. <laughs> Desire mine enemy. Desire mine and my enemy enemy is a good motto to keep in back of your head. Oh. Mm. Or put it in any <laughs> language you want. I was quoting, I think it was Yuktaswar wrote a song, or somebody wrote a song, Desire My, My Enemy. Mm. But desire is your enemy. Because desire is simply the agony of lack. 